Now let's talk about linear momentum or translational momentum or simply momentum. We use lowercase p for momentum. I don't know why we use p, but it certainly is not a good idea to use m because we're already using m for mass. In any case, the definition for momentum is m times v, mass times velocity. So if a mass is moving, it has momentum. And because velocity is a vector and mass is a scalar, momentum would be a vector too. Because mass can never be negative, so the direction of momentum is always the same as the direction of the velocity. Because they are vectors, it is important for us to pay attention to the directions when we deal with momenta and velocities. Let's look at an example. A 3 kilogram cart moves to the right at 4 meters per second. What is the cart's momentum? Momentum is uh, m times v. The mass is 3 kilograms. The velocity is 4 meters per second. So this is uh, 12. And what would the unit be? Since it is uh, kilograms times meters per second. The unit would just be kilograms times meters per second and it doesn't have a special name. And the momentum has a direction so it's 12 kilograms meters per second going to the right. Since the momentum is m times v, that means the change in momentum would be the change in m times v. If the mass does not change, then we can take the mass m, the constant mass, out of this delta. And we know that the average acceleration is delta v over delta t, which means I can rewrite the delta v as average acceleration times time. And what is this m times a? That would be the net force. And this bar here is the average acceleration, which means uh, what I get is the average net force. So the change in momentum equals to the average net force times the time. Of course, this part would be different if the mass changes. For example, a rocket's mass decreases when the rocket engine is on because it shoots out exhaust and therefore losing mass. But in this course, I do not think you have to worry about changing mass. So this is what we will use. This means uh, the change in momentum will be zero if the net force is zero. So the momentum stays a constant. The momentum is conserved if the net force is zero. This makes sense because if the net force is zero, there will be no acceleration. The velocity will be a constant, so the momentum will be a constant. The condition for momentum conservation is that the net force has to be zero. So we often use conservation of momentum to solve explosion and collision problems. In an explosion, one object breaks into multiple pieces. Let's say if it breaks into two pieces. The force of the explosion is the force that the bro two broken pieces push on each other. The forces are equal and opposite, action and reaction force pair. So when we look at the whole system, these two forces cancel and the net force on the whole system is zero and we have the conservation of momentum. This also means that the center of mass of the system maintains constant momentum and a constant velocity. Similarly, in a collision, two or more objects bump into each other. The force of collision between the colliding objects also come in equal and opposite pairs. So the net force on the whole system is zero and we have conservation of momentum. And the velocity of their center of mass would stay constant. For example, I have these two carts of similar mass. The mass of each cart is uh, about 0.9 kilograms. 
This one has a spring inside and I can compress the spring and lock it in place. When I push down the stick, the compressed spring releases its stored energy. Kind of like an explosion. It's just that in this case, the energy released is not chemical nor nuclear energy, but the spring's potential energy. Let's start with the spring compressed. And the two cards at rest next to each other. What do you think will happen to the cards after I push down this trigger? When the spring got released, the spring's force is the force between the two cards. The two cards push on each other and those forces are equal and opposite pair. Because mg and normal force cancel, if we ignore the friction between the cards and the floor, then the net force on each card would just be the spring's force. So this card gets pushed to the right, while the other card gets pushed to the left with the same amount of force. So these two cards starting from rest would go off in opposite directions. In this explosion, the net force on one card is not zero. The net force on the other card is not zero either. But the net force on the whole system would be zero because these equal and opposite forces cancel. The net force being zero on the system means the momentum of the whole system is conserved. If each card is 0.9 kilograms, and immediately after the explosion, this card moves to the right at 2 meters per second, what is the velocity of the other card? If we ignore friction, that means the net force on the whole system is zero. That means Momentum is conserved. At the beginning, both cards were at rest, so there's no momentum. That means that after the explosion, the total momentum should still be zero. Afterwards, this card has a momentum of 0.9 times the final velocity we're looking for, and the other card has 0.9 times 2 meters per second. So. From here, we can find the final velocity to be negative 2 meters per second. This is velocity is a vector, so the negative sign tells us it is in an opposite direction. So if we use the positive 2 for to the right direction, this negative means it is to the left. In order for the total momentum to be zero at the end, the two cards must have equal amount but opposite direction momentum. By the way, the total momentum of the system can also be thought as the momentum of the system's center of mass. Because the net force on the whole system is zero, the center of mass starting at rest would stay at rest. As the two cards move away, their center of mass stays here at rest. Now, if I add a 0.9 kilogram weight to the top of this cart, you can probably imagine that this heavier cart will now go off at a slower speed after the explosion. Let's say it now moves off to the right at 1.15 meters per second. What would the velocity of the other cart be immediately after the spring becomes relaxed? Again, if we ignore friction, that means the net force on the whole system is zero. So we have conservation of momentum. Initially, everything is at rest, so the total momentum is zero. Afterwards, the 0.9 kilogram has a velocity Vf we do not know. And uh, this 1.8 kilograms together, they're moving at uh, 1.15 meters per second. 
So this gives us the final velocity of of the cart on the left to be negative 2.3 meters per second. Again, if I say this 1.15 to the right is positive, that means the negative is to the left. Again, this system starts at rest, so the center of mass should stay at rest over here. The center of mass stays here, and the two sides have a mass ratio of 1 to 2. So the distance to the center of mass is 2 to 1. A stay move, the distance ratio has to stay 2 to 1. This matches our calculation for this particular case. The side with half the mass has twice the speed. Now let's try it again. But this time with a 0.9 kilogram weight on top of this cart. So they are 0.9 kilograms and 1.8 kilograms. We're not making measurements, we're just making qualitative observations here. However, if you would like to, you can take data from the video. Remember that there is error involved due to friction and air resistance on the cards, and that the floor is not perfectly leveled. Okay, let's see. Was the heavier cart slower than the lighter one? A system like this does not have to start from rest. If the carts were moving when the spring is released, the total momentum would still be conserved. Because when the spring goes from compressed to relaxed, the force between the two carts would still be equal and opposite action force and reaction force pair. Therefore, if friction and air resistance are negligible, the net force on the system is zero and the momentum of the system stays constant. At my website, you can find a link to a demonstration video showing two gliders connected by a spring. The gliders in the video are riding on an air track, so there is very little friction. In the video, the compressed spring gets released when the system is moving. So the two gliders would oscillate while the center of mass of the system continues to move at the constant original velocity. Because the system's total momentum is conserved, even us, the gliders, oscillate. Here I have an air track. It's a long straight metal beam with lots of small holes on its surface. A pump can pump air into the beam so air can blow out of these holes. When the pump is on, these gliders do not touch the beam surface. Instead, they ride on a layer of air with very low friction. This is kind of like an air hockey puck on an air hockey table. Let me turn it on to show you. Uh -huh.